Hello, welcome to the first episode of the Flying Cat Marketing video and podcast series. I'm Maiva Cifuentes, your host, and today I'm going to be talking to Alex Antolino, who's the creative director of a Barcelona-based startup called Typeform, which you may have heard, which is a startup that creates interactive experiences for brands and customers. Today we're going to be talking about branding, of course, but also creating experiences and how your brand can tie into your content strategy. If you like this episode, please like it, share it with your friends and colleagues, and subscribe to my channel. Let's dive in. So we're here today at the Type Forum offices in Barcelona, and I'm talking to Alex Antolino, who is the creative director for Type Forum. He's been here for a few years, and yeah. he's going to talk to us about branding. Yeah, thanks so much for inviting me to your podcast. Thank you. Cool. Maybe you want to introduce yourself a little bit more. Yeah, so I'm um, Alex Antolino. Uh, I'm the creative director here at Type Forum. Um, I work in the tech space creating brands through uh, design and content, that's what I do. Amazing. So I have a few questions for you today. Um, oh, actually you also have a branding hotline. Um, oh yeah, so very recently I started to create content, um, just mostly for the fun and to share what I know. Uh, I don't have like any specific agenda, one of the things I want to do is basically democratize like the knowledge on branding I think it's like I, I wish everyone had access to this knowledge because I think brands are really important so I re very recently launched uh, what I call the branding hotline which is a 24-7 um, hotline where people can get to ask me questions and um, yeah I get to respond through video in less than 24 hours it's really awesome so if you guys have any branding questions just call them on the branding hotline and, the and I'll be there <laughs> Um, so for those of you who don't know, Typeform is a pretty big startup, I don't even know if I can call it a startup anymore, um, in Barcelona that creates interactive experiences for uh, brands and consumers, basically, yeah. so they can fill out forms or do quizzes and it, it is very versatile mm -hmm. in what it can do. Um, so it's... Uh, let's start from your story, um, through okay. your career. You started studying film, and how did you go from film into branding? So I like to, I like to talk about my story and like my evolution as a um, accident, honestly. Like, I really like jumping from one, one thing to another and learning as much things as I can. So my journey is like very unexpected. I ended up here like as an accident. I started on film, as you were saying. Um, I started, actually I started with cinematography. So that was what I, I studied in film school and I did cinematography. So lighting, cameras, things like that. For like four years I was doing this. Of course, when you're doing this, you also learn filmmaking on the process. But at some point, like I, I even did like a couple of TV commercials with like lighting and nice. things like that. But I very soon realized I didn't enjoy it because it was like I was working with other people and those commercials, I was like, mm, I would do it in a different way, you know? And so at some point I was like, I need to, you know, go deeper. So I started directing and I had my own studio. I set up my studio in Barcelona and um, and yeah, I, I, I was directing commercials at the time and online content. I didn't even know what was online content, but I was doing <laughs> this because like agencies were like um, commissioning this to us. So for five years, I had my studio was directing commercials. And at the end of the stage, again, I had the same feeling. I remember I was shooting, um, I always tell this story because it was very eye opening for me. Um, I was commissioned to do this commercial for watches and it was um, female watches. And I get this script that it was like, okay, so to promote this, we have these five colors for these watches and uh, we're, gonna, we're gonna put five female on a swimming pool dancing and each one of them is gonna be a, a watch. And I was like, oh my God, I felt so bad. I did it because I had to do it, but I was like, this is the last thing I will do if I am like I'm not like if I'm not 100% buying the, yeah. the whole thing and so that was kind of like a tipping point for me where I was like yeah directing is cool but if at the end of the day I only get to execute the, the stories of other people um, it doesn't work for me yeah so that's when I kind of like 
eventually I shut down my company and someone was like, oh, there's this startup. I didn't know what a startup was at that time. I had no clue about Silicon Valley. I had no idea what was Series A uh, and they wanted, to, they wanted someone to do some tutorials. Um, so I, I did the interview and uh, I was broke. And I was like, I'm not sure, you know, you're asking me to do some tutorials. Dude, I'm not sure if this is something like I want to do. Um, and to say, and like, I was actually going to say no. But because a friend recommended me, that I'm talking about Typeform, um, I said, I want to make that much. Just instead of saying yeah. no. And they were like, okay. I'm like, <laughs> fuck. And I was like, okay, let's do it. How many tutorials do you want? And that's how my relationship with Typeform started, honestly. And I was very clear on the first interview, like, dude, if this lasts for like three months, great. If it lasts for like a year, awesome. Like, it's good for you, good for me. Yeah. And, um, and here I am, five yeah, years five later. Years, yeah. So you were saying that um, before you were kind of just executing the story and now in branding, it, does it feel more like telling the story? Oh, absolutely. The, the most fascinating thing about, like there's many similarities between branding and like story, uh, at the end of the it storytelling, story, yeah. right? So I like that you asked me this question about my evolution because it, it's the proof that you don't really need to be like a designer to actually run a brand. Yeah. Because, yeah, design is just the, the, the phase of it. And we're talking about logo, visual identity, all these things. That's the phase of it. But what really matters is that character that you're creating, which is your brand. Yeah. And that whole story and, like, the interactions the brand has, how the brand communicates, how it behaves. Like, I like to say and look at brands like people. Um, and for me, that's what the whole game is about. It's all about, like, um, creating a character and, uh, and make it honest, this character at the end of the day is a reflection of the business mm -hmm. and the people who run this business. So it has to be honest or else it doesn't work. Yeah. Um, and that, that for me, that's the funny part, like w how a filmmaker, um, cinematographer, whatever, like um, can run a brand and can develop a brand is because it's all about stories and, and building a character. Absolutely, mm. I agree. Um, so Typeform, as we mentioned, is the go-to provider now for interactive experiences. Yeah. Um, so how did this positioning affect your content strategy? Well, um, first of all, the positioning for Typeform, it's been like a huge challenge. Because um, David and Robert, the founders, I think it was seven years ago now, like they developed something very unique. They created a form, an online form, that didn't feel like a form. And that was the first ever form with good UI, let's say, ever created. And so it was very unique to the point that it got us thinking for many, many times, I'm talking about years, what is it the thing that we're doing? Is it forms or is it something else? Because it's, so, it's the same thing, the function is the same and the utility is the same, but at the end of the, it's just so different on the outside yeah. that may even, well, it definitely changes the experience. So what are we dealing with? So positioning for Typeform was a big one. Um, we went from beautiful online forums to conversational data collection, which also was a huge challenge to get there. Now, interactive experiences, like, and the whole thing about interactive experiences is because Yes, at the end of the day, you're collecting data, but like what really matters and what makes Typeform unique is the interface. For Typeform, um, it's all about one question at a time with a good design, good UI, mm -hmm. very customizable, very, um, you can adapt it to your brand. Um, for, but then there's other, like, there's other inf interfaces, like for example, conversations. You can share a Typeform as a conversation. It looks like a chatbot. You can embed it on your website. It's like you can make your blog articles more interactive, things like that. That's called conversations. Now we launched a new product some months ago called Bid You Ask, which is also helps you collect data, but it's not just collecting data. Now it's also community engagement. Mm -hmm. And it's the same thing um, that a Typeform would do, but through video. So we kind of had to elevate the category a little bit, at least for like what we do here. And so um, regarding content, uh, we have been, I wouldn't say we have been the best at producing content. We have, we have loads of content on like our blog, like we have a written blog and we have loads 
and the, honestly, I think the content is very good there. Um, but in terms of like video, we've done like a like a not a bad job, but like we didn't do the job mm -hmm. basically. Um, I think we could have been much better on video, and we're not strong. And our social channels, to be honest, like they're not the best. And it's not it's not about like good or bad. It's more about like it's just not we're not putting the the focus there. Um, so when it comes to video, we started creating these you know campaigns and there's this story that i tell uh many times which is um when we want i mean because like when you have a startup like many people get into job that and like they don't really know like i mean look at my story you know like i started as a filmmaker doing tutorials and all of a sudden one year after we got serious a and like the company exploded we went from 30 people to like 150 in one year and all of a sudden i'm the creative director <laughs> and for me it was fucking awesome but like to be honest like my learning curve was like so long and i had to build a team i had experience building teams from like my studio and running teams so that, that part was more or less okay but like i had no clue about branding i had a lot of intuition yeah but i had to catch up so for me it was great, but like it was not an easy journey. And like for a lot of people it was the same thing. That, that that's the thing with startups. Like sometimes you can get in a place where like there's a lot of junior talent. Um and that was the case for Typeform. So uh, one of the things, the story that I was gonna tell was that um there was this moment where the, um, we had to when we decided we wanted to go after conversational data collection, we we said, okay. Our main target is the US, especially in the West Coast, but like US in general. So we said, okay, how can we position <laughs> conversational data collection uh, in the West Coast uh, through content? So we decided to create a commercial, um, like very classic um, advertise, advertisement format, like 30 seconds, two pieces. Uh, and we decided to put it out, saying, hey, we do conversational data collection. Yeah, it was so naive. And we spent so much money on that, that is even gross. Um, and like, to be like, we put it out, it didn't work. It was awful, it was terrible. <laughs> and we had to pull it, like, it, we, I would say that we were a little bit of shame of like how, how poorly this went, the whole thing. Because we, we did a shooting, I mean, like, it was crazy. So that's <laughs> the, the story of a big failure that I like to tell because the only good thing that we got out of, I mean, I, for, I'm talking about myself, the only thing that I got out of, the, of that project or like commercial was first of all the experience, the learnings, and second that I get to talk uh, on conferences about this <laughs> and like people are like, oh, this is juicy. But like, it was awful. In terms yeah. of like results, it was terrible. But there was a big learning for that. It's like, we cannot just vomit what we think this business is about to people and expect that they will embrace it and be happy. Like, we cannot do that. And at the same time, we were developing like, um, what was like the interact, we were trying to make, because we only had the blog content, we we're like, oh, how can we make this content stand out um, once in a while, once a quarter? So we were like, okay, um, let's try to make it interactive. So what we did is like, um, we had the idea of, mimicking this, you know, on the DVDs when we had the um, version commented like with bo with a voiceover of the director over the yeah. movie and she or he is talking about, you know, how was the um, the movie and like, well, oh, and this is seeing uh, the actor, blah, 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 and these things. So we were like, mm, how would that look like if we did the same thing for a blog article? We applied technology that allows you with Typeform technology to have a conversation pre-scripted conversation um, with, the, with the author of the blog. Um, like he was sitting next to you and uh, the, the article was written by Paul, um, our current head of brand. Um, and we did that. And it was like an experiment and it literally crushed our metrics. Like people went nuts about it. We got like, I don't know the numbers by heart, but like, People were requesting this as a feature. We got people like, I want this on my blog. How can we get it? And we had no plans on doing this. Um, so that was a big one. And which actually this experiment became what I just said before, the conversations feature. Uh -huh. This is where it came from. So an award, 
it was not an even an it became an awareness campaign because it, it got a little bit viral and was a spread, but that was not the intent. Like that, it was the intent of making something exciting became a, like a like a very big part of the product. Yeah. And, they were, and we were like, mm, this is interesting. And then we did another one, which was uh, on a hackathon. I had the idea that I wanted to make like an interactive movie with Typeform, where you can actually decide the fate of the main character. Um, by the way, all these things are on the internet. Like You can find them. Um, the fate of the character, um, depending on you, what you select on a Typeform, and the questions you could prompt. And uh, we, I had this idea on Hackathon, some people joined me. We did the script, the recording in my apartment overnight, and the whole thing coded and everything in 48 hours. <laughs> it was so sketchy, it was terrible. Like, I literally had just one camera, no lighting. <laughs> I was like, raw, I was like, let's do it. I didn't sleep that night. Uh, it was super fun. But it was an experiment, it was just an experiment. Mm -hmm. And um, it worked really well, it didn't win the Hackathon. But then, uh, and then it was sitting there for a year. And the next year on Halloween, something said, oh, we need to do something for Halloween. What if we put out, because it was like the, the, the vibe was a little bit like a thriller kind of vibe. It was like, mm, why, don't, why don't we put this out, see why, how it goes. So we tweaked it a little bit because it was not ready to be launched. We tweaked it a little bit, we put it out, and people were nuts. Like over a weekend, we got more than like 4,000 feature requests, which is for us, it's like, I don't even remember, when I talk about this on conferences, I have a huge slide with the numbers. I, I don't even remember now, but it was very big for us. And we were like, hmm, this is interesting. Because every time we create some kind of experience, um, this thing lands. Yeah. So, so we initiated last year a new one that we haven't launched yet. Um, so it's kind of like exclusive for you guys. Um, it's called the Brand Compass, and it's a tool for people to get to know their brands. And it's all designed in like, like a mindful kind of like way of like a reflective tool for you that prompts you questions about your brand and your business, okay. and it helps you reflect about your brand. And you can go check it out. It's like, uh, I think it's brandcompass.app. Um, and yeah, we haven't launched this yet. But this, this is the first experience that we do in a conscious way thinking, oh, actually we can go from branded content to branded experiences. Yeah. And it just makes sense because this is what Typeform is about, bringing good experiences to people. And if our branding, it, not branding, but if on our communications, our brand awareness campaigns can become things like that, I just found that it's like really powerful, not just for Typeform, in general. Absolutely. Because it goes viral. Like people, when you do something that no one's done before, whether that's like education, entertainment, people go, people are interested because it's something new. And they wanna, if it's good and it's somehow useful or at least very entertain, entertaining, they will share with their people. And that would what make things go viral. So I wouldn't say that we got this like, you know, breakthrough where like, oh, this thing went viral. It, di it didn't happen for us just yet. But we definitely notice like a spike in these kind of things. So, yeah. Yeah. So that shows not only the value in experimenting with different things. Sometimes you're going to see huge failures, waste a bunch of time and money. But oh yeah. Without that, you can't move on and try different things. Absolutely. Right? And it also shows the value of understanding your brand mm -hmm. because you guys have a very interactive brand. You're all about creating experiences. So why would your content not also create an experience? So, which is super obvious when you say it like that, but when you're on the, like, it's a whole process, yeah. like, it's... You have to learn. It's so basic, like, when you put it like that, it just sounds so basic, it's like, of course. <laughs> but it took us, like, four fucking years to get there, because, like, what is this thing that, like, I remember when I joined Typeform, first of all, as I said, I had no clue about tech, but, like, my mom was like, what is this job that you just got? Like, you were with your studio, and where are you working now? It's like, you talk in English, like, what is this company? <laughs> I had no fucking clue on how to explain it, you know? It's like, how am I gonna explain? No, so you have a tool that people respond, and like, it's just so complicated to understand. At the beginning, if you're, like, not in the field, yeah. if, you're, if you're a marketer, it's like, better and better, right? But like, if not, it's just hard. So it took us like a long time to figure this out. Yeah. 
I think that for a lot of entrepreneurs and businesses, it takes time to understand really what you're about so that you can create the right kind of strategy that... Oh, yeah. The That's the hardest part. Mm -hmm. um, so you, right now you're also working, you're working on the compa brand compass, but you're also working on something called Video Ask, right? Yeah. Um, can you tell us about kind of what your process looks like as you experiment creating a new project and how you try new ideas and get rid of them or yeah. when you see, how can you tell that something is working well and it's going to have success and you continue with that idea? It's very hard to see if something is going to have success, but I can tell you something. So Video Ask is, as I said before, Video Ask is a tool that will allow you to send video interactions like video questions or answers and get video interactions back right so it's really good for like if you embed it on your website um, for lead generation for example mm -hmm. because it shows a more personal aspect of that company of that the brand like for now there's like we've seen a lot of adoption in like coaches or like micro businesses or like influencers people who are, understand by nature that themselves they're they're the brand right yeah. so that's why at the, this very this very early stage is because we launched this like three months or four months ago only we've seen a lot adopt a lot of adoption in like this um in these people right um but it is a great tool to show a face of your business that you don't get to show that much mm -hmm. and at the end of the day the story of branding, like if we were saying before, branding is a character, uh, like, sorry, brands are like people, brands are like characters. The hero journey of brands are like the, the journey to build trust. Yeah. And so that's it. Like, not even like make money and not even scale the business. The sole purpose of a brand is to build trust with the audience that that brand is communicating to. And so for video ask, it's really interesting because if Typeform allows you to build trust through authority, through good design. We know good design builds authority, right? If something is well designed, you're, gonna, you're just more likely to trust yeah. more that thing. It's like if I produce some music and I put it out and then I put like a very nice design cover, people will be like, oh, nice, nice music. <laughs> if my design, the like, cover of the design is like so shit, like you see it's poorly done, zero like, yeah, people are gonna Absolutely. perceive that music as worse and maybe it's the same track. So this magic that design has, um, that's what Typeform leverages to online forms, right? That's, how, yeah. that's the whole secret sauce of Typeform. But there's something more, because like, you can go into the Apple effect, where when you refine the design so much, you can create a disconnection because it's so perfect. Well, what is it called, the Apple effect? No, no, I just made this up. Oh. <laughs> I call it the Apple effect. Like Apple, it's so well designed that like at some point it, it's like porn, you know? Like, it just creates a disconnection. Okay. With the, because we humans are wired to understand that perfection doesn't exist. So when we see something that is so, so, so well done, by nature there's a little disconnect. So no wonder why Apple store are crowded with employees and they, they manage to leverage this like really nice personal, whether you like it or not, I personally I'm not sure, but like they're leveraged to create this like very personal and personalized experience on their stores because you need this too. Yeah. If you would, you see what I mean? You need to add the humans in there. Exactly. The because trust the is, exactly, absolutely. Because trust is three things. Trust is capability, it's doing your job really good. It's also coherency and consistency, so I know what to expect. But it's also care. Like, I, I, I can only trust some, someone, or, yeah, something. I can only trust someone that I know cares to a certain degree about me. Yeah. If I, I know for a fact you don't really care about me, you don't give a shit about me, I'm not going to trust you. You could be the best <laughs> professional in the world, the best agency. If you don't give a shit, I'm not going to buy your services. Yeah. So brands, like, they need to have in consideration those things. And Video Ask kind of like tackles this other part of like the connection. And when brands start to realize this, that it's not only about being super professional, but also being personal, like this is something they can mm -hmm. explore. But going back to your question, I wanted to make this little clarification because the way I'm approaching branding for like video ask, it's 
somehow different than the way I did for Typeform. Typeform was all about design, right? Typeform was all about, yes, it's about people, but the way, it's all about the experience. So when we did the Typeform rebrand with Design Studio, it was very clear to me that we had to tell a story about people, but that story has had to be very well crafted because it was inherent in the product. For video ask, um, I'm taking a more iterative approach. So it doesn't really matter if it's not perfect from day one. Mm -hmm. um, I just want it to feel real and raw. So just to give you an example, um, when we launched the Typeform brand, we were using a lot of stock image uh, photography, like Unsplash, things like that. Mm -hmm because of like resources and like we with the with typeform we did a rebrand with design studio and then three months when we finished three months after it was live it was just like that boom also the company had some story before some history before sorry so like we had to do like you know a switch with video ask it's a, it's a new product so we have the chance to start building up in a more you know with like in a more progressive way yeah so what i'm doing is like just to give you the example of the photography, so for Typeform, I was okay. At some point, like, I was like, we're not using more stock, we're producing, now that we have like, the resources and everything is in place, we're gonna start producing our photography, but I don't really care, because it's to tell a story. Like when, you, when, when you're directing a movie, you get actors, you tell a story. And for, for Typeform, we kind of like, took this approach, like, okay, we're gonna take, we can, actually most of the people who appear on the website at Typeform, they're employees. So um, we take pictures and we tell the story, right? Yeah. And I w I'm okay with that. Of course, if we tell about, if we do customer story, things like that, like, um, we're gonna go for, like, the, 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 the truth and, like, you know, be very honest with that. But, like, I'm okay with, like, you know, the style of Typeform being, you know, um, very realistic, but we need to tell a story, right? Mm -hmm. And it has to be very crafted. With video ask, after we passed the first, like, I don't know, maybe half a year or something of like establishing everything and like putting it everything out, we're designing our website now, we're like putting the elements in place. After this very like early stage, I have the commitment of like everything will be like user centered and like user sourced. So, any picture you will see in the website after this first stage where like we're like putting everything together will be real stories with real people and that's it yeah and because it has to and so this approach is like i don't really care about the logo of video ask today that much as i had to care about the logo for typeform, for typeform. Um, because i know it's like a more iterative approach it can be imperfect because the product it shows the imperfection of people and that's the magic. So I'm not really, so you see the differences. Yeah. So first it's getting the product just out there, getting people to generate content for you, and then you iterate on the, on the No, so for, for, for video ask, what, what I'm doing is like, I'm identifying either users that have really interesting stories or are using the product in an interesting way, that's one, or are getting really good results or identifying people who, who, who we think could benefit from the product and then introduce the product to them. And if they adopt it and they think it's interesting, then if they're willing, we can tell their story. And that's what you will find on the website. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, we're not gonna take like a, like a shot of a phone, you know, like, in, you know, see what I mean? Yeah. It's more like, let's say Typeform is a movie based on real facts and Video Ask is like a documentary. Gotcha. And uh, we're taking a more iterative approach. With Typeform, it was like, that's it. And we launched it. And then we, we allowed ourselves to evolve it. Like, you have to do this with a brand. But with Video Ask, there's not like a launching date. We're like, okay, because it moves so fast. It's such a small team that like every feature, there's a new week. Uh, sorry, every week, there's a new feature. So it's like, it just moves fast. So I don't really care. Like, we can progress. And, and community is going to be a huge thing for Video Ask. Awesome. Um, well, we don't have that much time left, and, but I just have one more question, which is kind of a <laughs> big one. Um, <laughs> so, it's always like that. Yeah, I saved it for last. But basically, you're, you are a very strong believer in that branding actually goes beyond business and that um, it already does now and it's going to even more in the future have an effect on society as a whole. Oh, 100%. 
So why don't you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, so this connects. It's a nice wrap up, even though it may, as you said, it's a big <laughs> question. But it, it's a nice wrap up because it connects to the beginning. So what do I do and why do I do it? Um, I'm a creative director and I, I develop brands. Um, and I do that because I think it's a beautiful way to influence society. And this may sound like a big statement, but I, I genuinely believe that. Like, I, I don't know, I like to tell the story, like people used to go to church before, like literally everyone went to church 200, 300 years ago. That was the thing, that there was no TV, there was no internet, it was just like one communication channel, and that's where you got your belief system. And you, you created your belief system on ch like uh, a, a church, you listened to the values that were given to you, and that was your, you know, that, that was your, the, the way you operated. Today, of course, there's a lot of people going to church, um, but there's also a lot of people who don't go to church. So where are these people getting those values? And some people may say schools. Yeah, maybe. Families. Family. Yeah. But like, where, if you get your values from your parents, where do they, your parents get their values? And I think, of course, um, there's many ways, but the, the most time we spend on today, every day, is on our devices. And social is a big part of the time we spend um, in our devices. And we're all following influencers, we're all following brands directly, and we're literally li like absorbing those narratives. Um, so for me, um, the people who run brands today, especially today, are in huge, huge power. They have huge power. Like, the first conversation I had about mobile phones not being fair necessarily in the way they were built was because a friend of mine just got the fair phone. Mm. You see what I'm saying? Like, um, I, I strongly believe that like, brands have a huge influence. Most of the people were not aware of that, but um, that's the main reason why I'm on a creative direction, because I, I want to put good narratives in society. That's my way of contributing. And I think most of people are not aware. I think, funny enough, teenagers are more aware of that than actually grown-ups and generations like us, like 16-year-old kids on TikTok are thinking about themselves as brands. Maybe they don't use the word brand, but they're, they're thinking about themselves as brands mm -hmm. and they're calculating their interactions with people, they're building a, a, a visual identity, and they're like, they're nailing it with branding. Yes. And the moment these people are 25, 30 years old, and they're running companies, that's it. Branding becomes main, mainstream. So, so that's why I want everyone to understand the power, because the power is there, and it, it's huge. So I think it's, it's, it's time for all of us to aware, be aware of this and own it and, 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 and make a positive difference. I agree. I mean, branding, in the end, it's, it's an identity, like you were saying. It's a character, it's a person. So as companies grow, and they grow much faster and much stronger when they do have a solid brand in place, they do have a lot of that power, don't they? Absolutely. Yeah. Um, and if you allow me to say one more thing, I think... Keep building, building on the idea of brands are like people. I think when brands fuck it up, and we can talk Pepsi with Kendall Jenner, we can talk all, all these big examples of big fuck ups that brands did. Um, if you think about it, it's always lack of emotional intelligence. It's always the same thing. Like, yeah. like, like society. Like, if you think about the big. Um, moments of progress in society, like, oh, we went to the moon, or uh, we discover um, penicillin, and things like that, it's all due to IQ and, and, and the rational thinking. But all the big mistakes, huge fuck-ups of society are due, in my opinion, to a lack of emotional intelligence. When you think uh, World War, uh, Second World War, 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 war like war. The, yeah, exactly, the Nazis and the same. When you think about these things, it's all about lack of emotional intelligence. And with brands, it's the same thing. If brands, the brands that are, succeed, that are successful is because they understand this. They are emotionally yeah. intelligent because they have empathy, they can understand their customers, they can have, um, 
bidirectional conversations. So for me, this topic is like fascinating and we could literally spend, like, I could literally spend like four hours talking about this. Yeah, I was just thinking I could start a whole other conversation <laughs> about it. But it's, I think that also emotional intelligence is kind of a, a new um, thing that's valued because maybe 20, 30 years ago, emotions were... You know, repressed. Really, you yeah. don't want to talk about them. You, they would tell you, don't bring your emotions to work. Well, no, Absolutely. you have to bring them to work. You have to. I mean, you will bring them anyway. <laughs> You're bring them anyway. So be able to uh, yeah. be able to deal with yeah. it. It's uh, like probably interesting. Emotions are the most important thing in communication. Oh, one hundred percent. Driving everybody. Um, okay, so I don't want to keep you too much because I know you have to go. But I uh, just want to mention if you guys want to follow Alex. It is on, why don't you say it? So yeah, so uh, on Instagram, I'm at Antolino. I try to surf um, branding content and the things I know uh, in a very engaging and fun and entertaining way. I'm literally about to start putting also branding, very, very fun uh, branding content on TikTok. Um, nice. And uh, very, very soon also on YouTube, um, I'm going to start putting um, entertainment content centered on branding. So in your handle on YouTube? My handle on YouTube is Alex Antolino. I think also it's... Also right yeah. yeah. Um, but if you follow me on Instagram, uh, if you're interested in other channels, I will let you know how to get there. Excellent. <laughs> He's also on LinkedIn. Yeah, I'm also on LinkedIn. <laughs> exactly. It's true. It's true. Yeah. It's so true. Yeah. Oh, um, shit. LinkedIn. I have it a bit forgotten. Too crazy. bad because LinkedIn is really good now. <laughs> okay. Well, all right. That's all. Thank Thanks so much. so much. Thanks for listening to this episode of the Flying Cat Marketing Series. If you enjoyed this interview, please give it a like, share it with your friends and colleagues, and subscribe to this channel. Stay tuned because next week I'll be interviewing another leader in the SaaS and startup world talking about their challenges and achievements. See you there.